Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for spending your time here with me. I'm going to be talking about my media bar, everything that I'm using with regards to my orchid collection and trying to grow in organically as best as possible. So what you see here right now is what I was using in 2020 from left to right. Mixed lacquer, just normal, large, small, everything mixed together. I had large lava rock because at the time I got a bag of large lava rock. There was no size differentials. It was just large lava rock. I had my ceramics and I had sand. And then for the mounts, thanks to Michael McCarthy and his genius idea regarding how to find an equivalent of EpiWeb that is much, much cheaper. You'll see a scrubby pad, which is green and hob material to the right of that in the container, which is white. So the hob material would replace my sphagnum moss and the scrubby pad would be my humidity buffer for mounts. And then you see my microfiber. So that was in 2020, we were doing well. All the orchids in different configurations were growing in just this line of media. If you hear anybody chirping away in the background there, that would be Siliano. He's to the left of me and he may or may not add his commentary agreeing or disagreeing with what I'm about to tell you. The majority of my orchids were doing great. I was figuring out certain ratios and everything was going fabulous. So what's changed? Oh boy, <laughs> what happened? I was so happy as well with my little selection of media. It was all very simple, very straightforward. What made this happen? This diversity and this variety of media that I use on a regular basis in my collection. Well, dirty lacquer happened. The quality of my lacquer early in the season had deteriorated to such a degree that I had to start separating out broken pieces that were absolutely useless. Yes, so in the process of separating out lacquer to make sure that I get the lacquer pellets that are actually feasible and useful and not damaging to my roots, the rest is history and is what you see here now. Not all of it though, but to the majority, this whole separation of lecker started because of the dirty lecker. And while I was at it, I then started to separate out large lecker and small lecker. The large lecker was suitable and will be always suitable for thick rooted orchids like some vidiums, some cattleyas, and some orchids that have this reputation of loving a wet dry cycle, which in self watering or semi hydroponics is never going to be the case. No wet dry cycle, but we can manipulate the climate in the pot by the size of the media that we're going to use. So this happened because of my dirty lecker. Ceramis never been an issue. Once I progressed from dirty lecker and separating large to small, now I have two storage units for my lecker. I moved on to separating lava rock. <laughs> so when I got new lava rock in, there was also different sizes and I went to town. <laughs> I've got large lava rock, medium and small. I've got some that are even a stage between medium. So that's like medium, semi-small, and then I would consider these like shards and cracks. But this is pretty much large, medium, and small, depending on the application of the orchid in question. So I use my large lecker primarily for the vandas or vandacious orchids that I have in orchid top, but I also use it to recover dendrobiums that I've messed up when I was using lecker for those. So the recovery dendrobiums that have thick roots get large lecker in self-watering. The same will apply though now with regards to lava rock and a vigorous dendrobium that I don't want to mess up during the winter when the evaporative cooling of the lecker would also affect hot growing dendrobiums. So self-watering and lava rock, large lava rock has become a thing Self-watering and medium-sized lava rock has also become a thing for the dendrobiums that I messed up with finer roots. 
while I was trying to get them to grow in lecker and self-watering. As a rescue mission, lava rock and dendrobium works really well. When it comes to repotting, <clears throat> it's not my preferred media of choice because it is not forgiving on the roots. But here you have it. You can say that I have now divided all my lava rock according to size and necessity. I also use very small lava rock for top dressing my Rapiculus lalia pots. So there's a lot of variety in how I use lava rock. Now that I've separated everything out into size and made myself a media bar, it's literally happy hour when it comes to repotting. Grab and go. It's awesome. Right, next up. I love my Ceramis. It's absolutely amazing. Works well for me when it comes to seedlings or even for the Rapiculus lalias. I used to always pot them up with Ceramis and then top dress with Lava Rock. Worked really well. Well, 2020 arrived. The cooties arrived. It was financially absolutely not feasible for me to import Ceramis anymore. So I always made sure that when I was cleaning media, my Ceramis was always separated out as well. And it was put into storage for as and when I needed it. I ran out of Ceramis in 2020 because of a very big order that I did for Rapiculus Lalias. And that was it. No more Ceramis, no more importing it. Just as a side note, what you see here is Ceramis that have been recently taken out of repots and it's been sterilized, cleaned up and it is in storage. So this is recycled Ceramis. So I had to think out of the box. Instead of getting Ceramis from overseas and getting it imported and paying all the, the weight and the shipping, I then moved to Akadama. This is normal Akadama. There is nothing burnt about it. There is no special treatment about it. This is from the bonsai section, just normal Akadama. And that is my Ceramis replacement which I can source locally, which I have been using for Rapiculus Lalias in a replacement to Ceramis, but also as top dressing some of my pots where I needed more humidity to stay at the surface of the pot for specific orchids, especially the ones that like to grow aerial roots and things like the Neos where a microfiber would be far too heavy handed. So I would sprinkle Akadama on the top of those pots. And that has worked quite well, I must say, in my climate, Akadama will not break down. I don't get freezing temperatures. It's almost like one of those permanent medias that I will be able to have in my pots on a continuous basis, no fear of breaking down. However, Akadama, as you can see, is a little bit more fine grade than the Ceramis here. The granules are much, much bigger. Problems when it comes to water retention ratio, and aeration, not quite adequate as with the Ceramis. So enter terrarium grit, horticultural grit, any kind of grit, and then mix it up in with the Akadama in a ratio that is adequate for orchid roots, depending on which orchids I'm addressing. Again, normally it is the Rapiculus lalias that I was addressing to replace the Ceramis with. So I have added a 60 to 40 ratio Akadama and terrarium grit, making it a separate media altogether. And the 60 is the grit and the 40 is the Akadama, giving me the wicking for any kind of needs within the pot, which I can combine with lava rock to give a wicking effect in the self-watering, giving me that buffer to bring the water up to the surface of the pot without suffocating the roots because I've got grit in there. So basically making my ceramist concoction combination just using Akadama and grit without suffocating them because of the small granules of the Akadama. And then we got a newcomer into town and it was a Metonia. Uh, Metonia is like a lot of water. I'm here in southern Spain. It is very hot. It is very dry. Lots of hot, dry winds. Small lecker would have sufficed if I kept on misting, misting, misting. However, from back in 2018, from an order that I got, I had actually included pumice, which I have never ever used. Pumice, perfect. Water retentive media, doesn't dry out on the top very quickly. Perfect for my climate, perfect for fine roots. In my case, I used it for the Multonia, Multonia Sunset to be exact, and it's working beautifully. So enter pumice into my media bar. 
And then I did something with brassavola, tubercolata or cordata, I'm not quite sure. I think it was the cordata. Because the brassavola roots in my climate, new roots, they react like Teflon. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't be misting constantly with all the drying atmosphere around the roots. I don't have the humidity. I just want to point that out. I don't have good ambient humidity on a consistent basis for aerial Brassavola roots, which have a Teflon characteristic and reject water anyway. So enter sponge rock, which is a, something that I ordered also in 2018. Never used it because my Lekka, Ceramis and Lava Rock was working so well all these years leading up to 2020. But then, you know, things happen. You check your stash and there is sponge rock and it is perfect for a self-watering pot where I put my cordata in. The roots have all the humidity around them, creating a little microclimate there in the pot. And then they can travel out of the pot at liberty, but at least some of the root is in the pot and then I can make sure that it gets hydrated enough without frazzling. So right at the back, sponge rock, perlite, sponge rock being large perlite, but here's small perlite, which I have only ever used for seedlings together in combination with the ceramis for little seedlings that need to have be in a separate cup in a semi-hydroponic setup. But this year I combined it with pumice to make sure that there's always aeration around the roots of the Miltonia sunset and it doesn't get too wet for an extended period of time. So when you flush, etc., etc., it is going to be a very wet environment, but the perlite counteracts that. So these two are combined in the pot of the Miltonia, but the perlite is only around the roots. Right. And then, <laughs> you still here? <laughs> Sand. Sand is something I also used last year, 2020, in order to cover a little bit the pots on the surface of my Rapiculus lalias when I potted them up to simulate somewhat the debris and all the gritty sand that falls into the crevices of the rocky ledges where they live. That also allows for a little bit of more of water retention around the roots, even be it marginal, but in their environment, the roots are always in kind of gritty kind of sandy little residue and that is why i had sand last year that is why i still have sand this year however because i've been using akadama with grit i have not potted up any rapiculus lalia this year requiring sand the only thing i did this year was top up the other rapiculus lalias from 2020 with another little top dressing of sand because they only had the larger gray ceramis in the pot <laughs> everything is sort of a, a little balance uh, you know one complements the other but it won't do with something like the akadama and the grit but it's worked i have a big bag of sand outside and i still don't know what i'm going to do with it and i don't throw much away bringing us to the genius idea of michael mccarthy from 2020 these were new last year, and they have become a staple staple in my collection. Microfiber not included. But while we've got the microfiber going, this is a mop. I bought it new, it's just a mop. I cut off all the strands, and then I cut the strands into half again, and use it as a microfiber for my pots. When I have to replace it, I bleach it, and then I wash it in the washing machine, and then it is ready to go for the next repot. Clean, reusable, recycling, as you do. Scrubby pad, this lifesaver idea for my collection. Inorganic growing on mounts. So this is the one where fine roots can penetrate easily, and I use this also as a humidity buffer on some mounts, just to make sure that my dry air doesn't dry out a mount too quickly. Has worked fabulously. This here is hob material that you would put into your extractor fan above your hob, and that would catch all the grease and all that stuff. But in my case, it is a replacement for sphagnum moss. I use this in combination with the scrubby pad in the back here, and I can manipulate the shape and the size I can add to my mounts and use it as a pocket. 
and I use it also as my replacement for sphagnum moss in my ICU setups. However, I have also used it as the main media for my Stanhopia and they love it. They're doing really, really well. And all of this, with the exception of Akadama, which is a little bit more complicated, but when I have to unpot a pot that had Akadama in it, I can easily strain out all the Akadama because it settles to the bottom of the sieve I can strain that out and I might reuse it in another pot if I know the orchid was very, very healthy. I would not reuse Akadama from a pot where I have a suspicious orchid. But all this is because I got dirty lecker and then I started separating out and my mind went nuts thinking different sizes, different applications, different benefits, make my life a little bit more easier. Perhaps, who knows? It was only in 2021 when I've started differentiating sizes of media and that I've introduced Akadama. So far, I'm not seeing any problems whatsoever. In some cases, if there have been issues, I know what I need to adjust and adapt. I haven't gotten around to that yet, but so far, everything you see on my media bar is recyclable. At least, at least I stuck to that. That is one of the main principles with regards to me wanting to grow inorganic. Whatever comes out of the pot gets recycled and then gets distributed back into the pot. And this tray down here is actually my winter Tolumnia tray when they come inside. And that is my media separating station. <laughs> I hope that this was of interest to you. I am quite amazed when I started collecting my media to be able to show you what on earth happened. How is it possible? <laughs> well, Dirty Lekka entered the house and my tendency is to be pedantic is why you see all of this now. 2020 entered the house, no more shipping in of media, hence Akadama came. Akadama was a little bit too wet, enter grit. I've got media sat in bags in a cupboard. That's not happening. Enter Miltonia sunset, enter pumice and whoops, enter perlite and then sponge rock. All these things. But anyway, I hope, like I said, this was of interest. I appreciate your time. If there's anything that comes to your mind with what you're seeing here, please just ask away in the comments below and I'll be very, very happy to elaborate. Thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you in the next video. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.